From an outsider's perspective, Formula One and Europe are one and the same. In fact, I think Europeans are more protective of F1 than they might actually be of their home countries. Trust me, I know based off of some of the comments on my last attempt at making an F1 related video. Being that Formula One was founded in Europe, it should be of no surprise that the majority of drivers on the grid over the years have been of European origin, and have been the home of every championship winning driver since 1998, with only 12 non-European drivers ever winning an F1 championship with those being from South Africa, Argentina, Brazil, South Africa, Australia, Canada, and the United States in the sport's 72-year history. As an American, we have the notion that Americans can be the best in the world at anything we do. Call it American elitism or entitlement, it is part of our culture to be the best we can be, which is why I have a hard time understanding the lack of an American on the F1 grid. While we do have an American team in the form of Haas, the last driver to race under the American flag was Alexander Rossi, who made seven starts in 2015, and previously to him was Scott Speed in 2007. Rossi and Speed are the only two Americans in the past 22 years to compete in F1, and the last American driver to win an F1 race was Mario Andretti at the Dutch Grand Prix in 1978, 44 years ago. So what's the deal? Americans rank second only to the Brits in the number of drivers that have competed in F1, and Americans have two world championships, 15 different drivers have won at least one race as well. Americans are no slouches when it comes to going fast, but the thing that holds the best American drivers from ever taking the F1 grid is the lack of commitment it takes to get there. Americans are not known for being lazy. I myself am very lazy, but Americans in general are very much get stuff done kind of people. So when we want something, we go for it. But to want F1, you really need to commit. Firstly, the most likely thing you'll need to do is pack your bags and plan to spend your teenage years in Europe competing in carts and single-seater series, honing your craft, attempting to make a name for yourself against the best in the world. Hamilton, Vettel, Alonso, Verstappen, Leclerc, and pretty much everyone on the current F1 grid did this on their way to the top. Even Scott Speed and Alexander Rossi competed in multiple European championships, ranging from Formula Renault to GP2 and 3, on their way to an F1 seat. This is hard for Americans who have multiple professional racing series options at home, including IndyCar, NASCAR, and IMSA, which are all well-respected series in their own right. Rossi put it best himself, saying it's very difficult to convince parents to move their lives while their kid is 12 to 15 years old, drop out of school for the most part, be homeschooled, and go live and race in Europe. Even if you do have the opportunity to go race in Europe at a young age, it does not mean you'll have success. IndyCar champion Joseph Newgarden moved to England in 2010 to compete in GP3, and after a poor overall season and difficulty with culture shock, moved back to the US to continue his career towards IndyCar. Even with European success, to extend to an F1 career, you typically need to be part of an F1 team's junior program, which every team has other than Aston Martin and Haas. This not only requires you to be competitive, but seen as worthwhile to be included, and just as easy as you can be added, you can be dropped, or worst case, being good enough to reach F1 but not having a seat available due to your team affiliation, an issue several European drivers are currently facing. While being good enough to be just one of 20 drivers taking the grid any given Sunday is hard enough, for many, money is where the real issue comes into play. An F1 seat alone can cost millions, not accounting for the cost of your junior career on top of that. Hamilton's father remortgaged his house and worked four jobs just to fund his son's possible F1 career, and while most F1 drivers come from wealthier families, F1 level wealth typically requires a relationship with a company or brand willing to help fund your seat. While Americans would have no problem finding American sponsors for a racing career with the amount of money that flies around for advertising, that funding would most likely hinge on them being in an American series. Most American companies would see an extremely limited return on investment for a primarily European series, and it would require a truly international brand such as Coke or Cisco who are already sponsoring F1 teams directly to see any type of return on investment. With all that being said, is there any chance that we may see an American F1 driver in the near future? While the answer isn't exactly a yes, it's a lot closer than you might expect for two American drivers that stand on the cusp of possible F1 seats in the near future. Colton Herta, the son of former open-wheel driver Brian Herta, is a 22-year-old American currently competing in his fourth season of IndyCar competition with Andretti Autosport. Michael Andretti and his team have been in the news over the last year, almost successfully purchasing the Alfa Romeo F1 team, and even more recently announcing that he had submitted a bid to enter a new team into Formula 1. Herta has been linked to any possible Andretti Formula 1 entry, and with good reason. Herta has the racing pedigree. He started racing karts at the age of 10, eventually transitioning to Europe to race in multiple British Formula series, 
before coming back stateside to compete at Indy Lights, the feeder series to IndyCar. All the obstacles in the way for an American to join F1 that I've spent the majority of the video explaining just don't apply to Herta due to his relationship with Andretti. Herta ticks the boxes for skill, he raced in Europe at a young age, and for the series he competed in, was quite successful, earning multiple wins and podiums. He skips the need to be part of any junior driver program to at least enter F1 with Andretti. The possibility of moving on to Mercedes, Red Bull, or Ferrari is still incredibly unlikely due to having no relationship with those teams though. The biggest issue of them all, money. As I said before, every driver brings some amount of money, but Herta does not bring any substantial amount with him, but rather Andretti and his partners are funding the project themselves, allowing Herta to enter F1, and there is no telling what might happen with that second driver's seat next to Herta. In my highly biased American mind, maybe Andretti would give a shot to the next most likely American to join the F1 grid, Logan Sargent. While Herta has some European experience, Sargent understood the assignment better than anyone and moved to Europe in 2009 at the age of 9 to begin competing in karts. Sargent would go on to win the Junior World Karting Championship in 2015, joining names such as Charles Leclerc, Fernando Alonso, while also being the first American to win an F1 Karting Championship since Lake Speed in 1978. Sargent would go on to compete in multiple Formula 4 championships, scoring multiple victories before progressing to Formula 3, where in 2020, he finished third in the championship by only four points after a heartbreaking first lap crash in the final round of the championship. While Sargent clearly has the talent, what he does not have is the financial backing, as Sargent had to complete another year in F3 due to a lack of funding to proceed to Formula 2. Sargent did make the jump to F2 this season, competing with Carlin after being announced as part of the Williams Driver Academy. Sargent has the talent and the relationship with an F1 team, but unless he finds the money to take the next step or Andretti comes knocking, the unfortunate likelihood is that Sargent might never see the F1 grid, even if he is deserving of it. While these are the two most current likely to make the F1 grid, and I really do place money on Herta taking a seat in a Renault-powered Andretti Autosport entry in the next few years, there are also other promising young Americans who are trying to take the necessary steps to compete at the highest level. Kalen Frederick, Jack Crawford, and Juan Manuel Correr are three young Americans currently competing in F3 for the 2022 season and have the possibility of moving on to Formula 2 if they're able to impress in their F3 campaigns. There is the obvious possibility of my bias as an American, but I believe that for F1's plan to grow the sport in the US and for it to compete with domestic motorsports, then there will need to be an American on the grid. And not just an American on the grid, but an American scoring points, or even better, podiums or wins. If Herta and Andretti can come in swinging and be consistent midfield battlers, that will do more to help F1's growth in the US than three races could ever hope to achieve. Well, that is my completely biased American view, and since the likelihood is that the majority of you watching this are not American, which American do you think has the most realistic chance of making the grid? Please leave that in a comment below, and don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel for future videos.